Welcome back. In this video, I'll be adding some CSS to our application to give it a bit of style and to show how static files can be served. Static files typically include things like images, JavaScript, and you guessed it, CSS. So to get started, I'll add another folder to our project called static. And inside that folder, I'll add another folder called CSS. And this is where all of the CSS files for our application are going to live. The first one I'll create will be index.css. And this is the CSS file that I'm going to use to style our index template, which is the one that displays all of the articles. We should also add a sources.css to style, but for now I'm just going to focus on index. That's actually all you need with Flask to start serving static files. Everything that goes into this static folder is going to be served by the Flask uh, web application as a static file. So that part's really easy. Let's go over to our terminal. and start the server up. And then if I go to the browser, I should be able to go to localhost 5000 slash static slash CSS slash index dot not dot HTML dot CSS. And see with HTML, it brings a 404 not found but with the .css, it brings a blank page because we didn't put anything in that uh, index.css file. So now that we've got that created, we can start to fill it out. But first, I want to have this index.html file import that CSS. So all the CSS that I'm adding into this dot CSS file is going to be applied to this index.html template. And that's done with the link tag. Of course it's a style sheet. Type is text slash CSS. And then the href is going to be our static whoop. slash CSS slash index dot CSS. And that's it. So now, just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and restart the server so it rebuilds that template using our new CSS import that we just put in. And then if I go back to the editor, I can start filling in this CSS to style our page. And the first thing I want to do is, I do this in a lot of CSS, is kind of normalize things so that everything has zero padding and zero margin, just to wipe out whatever the default for the browser was. Because it's kind of dangerous to rely on those defaults as they can they can vary between browsers and your page is going to look wildly different with different margins and paddings. So this is just a good first step. Uh, some people take it a, even a step further and normalize way more things like button styles and uh, you know, just other attributes that you can try to normalize to reset in the CSS. I'm just going to use this reset the margin and padding. And then on the body of the document, I'm going to change the default text color to 333, which is a dark gray, or kind of an off black, um, instead of using a solid black, it's just a softer color, just an aesthetic choice. And same thing with white, 
I'm going to change it to this F1, 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 which is an off-white, so it's not as harsh of a contrast. And then I'm going to explicitly set the font family to be uh, Helvetica following through to the Arial, following through to just any sans serif font. Cool. So let's see how this changes the page. If I go to the, the main page, there we go. So the style is applied now. It doesn't look that great. Um, you can see everything's kind of bunched together and there's no margins on the side of the page. But the style is applied. So let's go back to the editor and Let's fill this out a little bit more. First thing I want to fix is everything in this document is contained within this main element. And I want to bring that main element in to create a column with some margin on the sides. So I'm going to style main and I'll say the box sizing is border box. And what that does is any padding that I add to it and any border, I'm not going to add border, but if I did, any border would be included in the width and height dimensions instead of implied like on the outside. It makes it a little bit easier in my mind to deal with the, the padding and the borders, which is good because I'm going to set the padding to be um, 0.5 EM and then I'm going to set the margin to be 0 vertical margin so there's not going to be any margin above or below the main which is good because you know it's going to contain the whole page i don't necessarily want a gap at the top or bottom but then the horizontal margin is going to be auto and that's going to have the effect of centering the the main column that we're creating and the width is going to be 100 percent to fill the space, but I'm going to make the max width be 640 pixels. The effect of this is going to be if the device is for whatever reason smaller than 640 pixels, the width of the element is just going to grow or shrink with it. But if it's larger than 640 pixels, it's going to stay consistent and there's going to be you know, these margins on the side from this margin auto. So I'll save that and then head back to the browser. Um, give it a reload. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was looking for. I want everything to be in this little uh, centered column. Now I can go back to the editor and what else should I focus on? I want the articles to be easier to differentiate between one another. So let's focus on that. What can I do with this article? Well, the first thing I want to do is be explicit about the font size. We'll say 14 pixels is the font size default. They're going to have a little bit of padding. Yeah, it's 0.5 VM again. Um, they're actually going to be this solid white background to differentiate them from that off white total background of the page. And then I'm going to give them a bit of a box shadow just to make them pop out a bit. Nothing crazy. It's a pretty subtle box shadow. 
This is a common technique. You'll see it on all kinds of websites. You see the opacity or the alpha is pretty low. It's only 0.1. So let's see how that looks. That's not bad. Our articles don't have any space between them, and that's something I'd like to change. But if you look at the edge here, that's that subtle shadow styling and the slight contrast between the background and this white color here. So let's add a little bit of space between the articles. And I find a good way to do this is to say article plus sign article and this selector is going to find any two articles that are next to each other and then it's going to let us put the style on the following article so the style is going to be applied to the second article which means if I add a margin top to it that margin is going to put a space between the first article and the second article so save that and see how this looks. That's much better. There's just this subtle little gap that helps you see the difference between the two articles. That looks nice. Okay. Um, go back to that. I'm going to go ahead and be explicit about this h1, the header there. So I'm going to say main direct child h1. Font size will be 20 pixels. And the margin is actually going to be that 0.5 em margin again for the vertical and nothing for the sides horizontal. So that had the effect of just kind of setting an actual font size to this as opposed to falling back to whatever the browser defined it as and just defining clearly what I want the pat or the margin, the vertical margin for this to be. That looks good to me. So now I'm going to set the uh, style for the article heading. That's going to be this h1 that's a member of the article that has the link to the article and the title. All I'm going to do on this one is be explicit about the font size. It's going to be 18 pixels. so. A little bit smaller than the total page heading. And see how that looks. Yeah, that's nice. Makes this stand out a bit more, and these don't need to be that big. Um. I'm not happy with them being blue and underlined like that. Uh, links are that way by default, but I think it would be nicer if the color will just inherit it. So it's going to inherit the color from the article or from the H1, which inherits it from the article. So now they're not going to be blue. And to get rid of that underline, the uh, text decoration just gets set to none. So now, there we go. There's still links, but they don't have that underline. That looks good. Let's 
see here. I want a little bit of a margin between the date added and the source row. I also want the date added to be a bit more subtle. So let's say article added. I believe that's what I did. Yeah. I mean, I guess I can be explicit about making this a direct ancestor since it is. Um, this one's going to have a margin top of a little bit more subtle. This will be a 0.25 EM. And the color is going to be more of a gray. And the effect of that should be to make it more subtle and to pull it down a bit from the source. I'm going to pull the body of the article down a bit too. But this isn't really an emphasis point. This is the emphasis. This is kind of secondary and this is, you know, third to what we should be focusing on. So now I can also do, you know, the body of the article. This one's going to have a margin at its top. It'll be a bit more of a margin. I'll do a 0.5, spread it out a bit more. Um, I'm also going to be explicit about the line height just to not rely on any defaults because I find it's easier to read with a nice line height. So there we go. Now it's just spaced out a bit more. So I don't know about you, but I think this looks great. Um, I'm not going to bother styling the source page. We need to find a better interface for that. I don't even know if I'm going to get to that in this video series. Because at this point, we actually have something that's functional. Like if I, I click on this link, I can read it. And when I load my page, that article is gone. The only thing that we don't have in our application right now is a background task that's going to be periodically polling these feeds to get updates. So in the next video, we're going to add this thread in the background that's going to do our update system. Bye.